So in the space of a week, Liverpool's season has taken a big hit. A draw against Manchester United, followed by a loss to Crystal Palace, means that Liverpool fall to third place in the Premier League. And a huge 3-0 defeat to Atalanta has almost certainly killed any hopes for Europa League glory for Liverpool. But let's rewind a little bit and begin with the clash against Manchester United. What went down last Sunday? Well, Liverpool were wasteful in front of goal and suffered the consequences. Heading into this game, the two biggest clubs in England had already faced each other twice earlier this season. A 0-0 draw at Anfield and the recent FA Cup tie which saw the Red Devils come out with the victory. So Liverpool were yet to beat their biggest rivals, so this was the perfect opportunity for them to do so. But it did not go to plan. Whilst Liverpool did start off well after Diaz put the Reds ahead by punishing Manchester United's poor marking from a corner, the remainder of the first half was very much Liverpool wasting chance after chance after chance. Half time, Liverpool had 14 shots whilst United had zero. But even with the 1-0 advantage and the countless missed opportunities, United were still in the game and after each chance missed by Liverpool, it felt that United were going to be more and more likely to score from their first shot of the game which is exactly what happened after a poor pass by Kwanzaa and Bruno Fernandes scored from near the halfway line with a first time shot which flew past Kelleher who couldn't make it back to his goal in time. And this was the worry all along from a Liverpool perspective. If you're going to be wasteful in front of goal, it can come back to haunt you, especially with someone of the quality of Fernandes who is probably one of the only players who would have shot from that distance and be able to pull it off also. And the momentum began to switch at this moment as United were getting more joy going forward and forcing Kelleher to work. And shortly after, and in a moment of pure brilliance, Maynou picked up the ball on the edge of Liverpool's box, turned and killed it beautifully in the top corner, giving them the lead. Now it was Liverpool's time to turn the game around, but time was minimising. And the chances were also slowing down as United looked to defend their lead. But their golden opportunity came after Harvey Elliott was fouled in the box by Juan Bissaka, which allowed Salah to coolly score the equaliser from 12 yards. Salah's reaction after scoring, instantly going to get the ball out of the net so that play would restart as quick as possible, spoke of Liverpool's urgency to find a winner in the 6 minutes plus stoppage time that remained. And they so nearly did so in the 94th minute when Robertson's knockdown found Diaz, only for the number 7 to clear the bar from close range and the game therefore finished all square. This meant that Liverpool had now failed to beat Manchester United in three attempts this season after the draw on the weekend, and consequently, Liverpool were no longer the league leaders. And just a few days later, Liverpool had a chance to right the wrongs of their last game in the quarter-finals of the Europa League against Atalanta. But it was simply a disaster. In one of Liverpool's worst performances during Klopp's tenure, Liverpool suffered a 3-0 loss at Anfield, and deservedly so. And in fact, Atalanta had chances to score even more, so this scoreline was somewhat flattering to Liverpool. And this was the Reds' first loss at home since last year against Real Madrid, and just like in that game, they got embarrassed and outclassed by the superior team on the night. And the warning signs were there, because like many games this season, Liverpool squandered chances for Atalanta very early on in the game, but were kept in it by some poor finishing and a good save by Kelleher. But continuing on from last Sunday, Liverpool were lacking that cutting edge in front of goal once again after Nunez missed a huge chance that was created beautifully by Curtis Jones. And when Atalanta got their deserved goal at the end of the first half, they did not look back, adding a second and a third in the second half to stun the Reds. But Liverpool did have their moments with a marginal offside goal by Salah and two missed opportunities from a returning Diogo Jota. But overall, Liverpool were simply outclassed and their chances of qualifying for the next round are not impossible, but having to win by a four goal margin away from home in the second leg is highly unlikely. And today, Liverpool suffered a 1-0 defeat at home to Crystal Palace where it was the same old story. Chance after chance after chance after chance missed. It's getting ridiculous. It feels like no Liverpool players will score, whether it's Salah, Jota, Nunez or Jones. Another worry, which has been a huge issue all season, is how Liverpool go a goal down early on, almost every game, which happened once more against Palace, who scored in the 14th minute. This means that out of 32 of Liverpool's Premier League games, they have gone behind in 21 of them. And admittedly, for a lot of these games, Liverpool have been able to come back and win, which were awesome at the time, but it's not a sustainable way of playing for a team looking to compete for the title. And we've seen that recently, where it feels that this Liverpool team have run out of steam. 
And also, the system that Liverpool are playing currently clearly needs adjusting because Liverpool commits so many players forward to try and score goals but still can't. Whether it's poor finishing or the real lack of link-up play between the forwards, it's just not good enough. Not to mention that Crystal Palace played through Liverpool at ease, where at times all it took was one pass and they had a decent goal scoring opportunity. But I must say that Palace deserve credit for making it difficult for Liverpool, making last minute blocks and tackles to keep them from scoring. And Dean Henderson also made some crucial saves. Now the only players that deserve any praise from that performance were Robertson, McAllister, Diaz, Gakpo and Alisson. The rest of them seem to forget that they are playing in a title race. But what's next? And is Liverpool season over? Well, not quite. There are six games remaining for Liverpool in the Premier League and currently the Reds sit in third place level on points of Arsenal who have the better goal difference. So it would be silly to think that Liverpool are completely out of the title race, but with that being said, it was clear that for Liverpool to become champions, they had to be almost perfect in the final few games of the season. Especially when you have two teams like Arsenal and Man City breathing down your necks. But luckily for Liverpool, Arsenal also lost to Aston Villa, which boosts their title hopes just a bit more. But then again, Man City, who are now first, often don't slip up in these positions, so it would take a lot for Liverpool to win it from here. Especially with more difficult fixtures for Liverpool to come, such as Spurs at home and Villa away. Not to mention away games against Fulham, Everton and West Ham in the span of a week. But before then, Liverpool now have to play Atalanta in the second leg of the Europa League tie where they must overcome a three goal deficit. Now, there's two ways Klopp can approach this game. Firstly, play a B team because there's only a small chance that Liverpool will turn this tie around. Or secondly, Klopp can line up with a very strong team and go all out. For me, I would pick the second option and at least try to turn it around regardless of how unlikely that would be. Because right now, not only are Liverpool not scoring goals, but they also can't prevent teams from scoring. So it would take some miracle for Liverpool to get through. But one major disappointment with Liverpool this season that we must discuss and that has affected their chances of winning the title is their record against the current top six. They have a record of one win, five draws and two losses. But if we take a closer look at these games, it paints an even more frustrating picture. A 2-1 loss away to Spurs where Liverpool had a goal incorrectly ruled out and conceded a last minute on goal. A very strong performance against Man City at Anfield that was lacking in end product and a very controversial last minute decision not going in Liverpool's favour. Two wasteful performances against Manchester United and a draw at Anfield against Arsenal where another controversial decision went against the Reds. Now, there are some common themes in some of these games mentioned, and that is missed chances. It's strange because whilst Liverpool have scored more goals than any other team in Europe, there are still countless games that I can think of on the top of my head where Liverpool have dropped points from wasted opportunities, and even in some wins, it could have been by greater margins if the Reds had been more clinical. If we take a look at the expected goals for Liverpool in the Premier League, the Reds have underperformed their expected goals by about three goals, whilst in comparison, both Arsenal and Man City have overperformed their XG and if we look at the data of Liverpool's forwards, it tells us that Salah and Nunez are third and fourth for the highest XG generated in all of the Premier League, only behind Haaland and Solanke. Yet 11 players have scored more goals than Darwin as he's underperformed by roughly 6 goals. Luis Diaz has also underperformed his XG by roughly 2 goals, while Salah and Gakpo are about where you would have expected them to score. Diogo Jota is certainly Liverpool's most clinical player, as despite going through a difficult period where he went a year without scoring for the Reds, his absence has been felt, especially in recent weeks. Unlike his teammates, Jota has overperformed his XG by 3 goals. But it's not just his goal scoring, but it's a variety of finishes, whether it's right foot, left foot, header. He can do it all. His return is a welcome one as Liverpool look to end the season with winning the Premier League. But after the recent draw against Manchester United, the title is no longer in Liverpool's hands. So all they can do is continue to win their games and hope that Arsenal and Man City slip up. But that's all for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.